What are you shouting for? It might not be fucking funny. <laughs> now, before we start, boys and girls, there's a fucking vicious rumor going round about me, and I'm getting fucking bastard who are in sick of it. <laughs> Some cunt saying I'm anorexic. <laughs> I'd like to thank the committee here for bringing me over, especially the big lad, the big lad, Dave. Thank you for bringing us to Germany. A tan, he's a tan in the corner. Oh, what a lovely fella. He's knocking around with a dolly bear and he lets me smell his fucking fingers. Well, my name is Roy Brown. If you haven't seen me before, I've actually got me weight down. It's just down around me arse and me fucking bollocks at the moment. Few tips for you. I've cut out that fucking jogging. I found out you ain't got a lot farther in the car. You stop fucking shouting at me, you ugly twat. Shit's a hedgehog. <laughs> Keep your voice from the time to sleep in fucking Australia. Well, what a fucking good crowd. I wish I was out there watching this. How we wreck the fucking place. Hang on. Some cunts beat us to it. But put me in the dressing room there. It's like an Ethiopian's fucking arsehole. Full of fucking cobwebs. I did a show the other night, there was 50 Ethiopians in, sat on one fucking chair. Here's another one you won't fucking get. A friend of mine said he'd like to help the Ethiopians. I said, well, send them some money, you tight bastard. He said, well, I haven't got any money. Said, what do you do for a living? He said, I sell Venetian blinds. I said, send them a fucking big van load of Venetian blinds. They'll sell the blinds, they'll get the money, they'll buy the food. Do you know, he got a lovely letter back off their government. He said, dear Ted, thanks for the bunk beds. Now, first of all, I apologise for looking tired. I was up very early this morning. The fucking wife had left her legs open. <laughs> In actual fact, I've just had a wank. I enjoy a wank. Don't you enjoy a wank? <laughs> I wank for years. But then Samson didn't come out the end. I thought, fucking hell, I'll book it. <laughs> I think everybody should wank. I mean, your hand's never going to fucking leave you for another arm, is it? It's not going to brag to all the other hands, you've got a little dick. And it will wipe your fucking ass for you. A woman said to me the other night, you know, Chubby, I'm getting fucking sick of you. You're always taking the piss out of women. I said, well, a man's never made me want to drive my car over a fucking cliff. A man... A man never wanted half of everything I ever fucking had. A man never got me a hard on at the last minute crossed his fucking legs. I've had a good look round, there's some lovely girls in here tonight. Any of you ladies having trouble with the old minge? Come and see Roy later on. I'm not an experienced gynaecologist, but I'll have a fucking good look at it for you. I've gone about sex, it's that long since I had my leg over, I've forgotten which armpit the fucking cracks under. <laughs> Me and my wife now, we'll go out and have a meal, we'll have a good drink, we'll go home, we'll watch a blue movie, we'll get into bed, strip off, skip sex and go straight to the fucking cigarette. <laughs> How wasn't it for you, fat cunt? I do my best to turn her on. I rub tuna fish all over my body so it will fucking smell the sin. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I had a good fuck. I call our water bed the fucking Dead Sea. I don't know that she knows where my dick is. Man, she couldn't find an elephant in the snow. A fucking diarrhea, my wife. Here's a little poem. I was sent to a club by an agent. I'm a comic, it's my bread and butter. I was on with an actor that razor blades and God, you think I'm a nutter. Well, the beer tasted like cat piss and the piano player was a queer called Rose. And a drummer had only one arm, you know, and a great big bowl on his nose. And the stripper's tattoo was so funny. On her bum was only a wheel. But when she bent over, it revealed a Land Rover and all the lads wanted to feel. <laughs> And I walked on the stage in the darkness, and I'm doing my act with no light. 
And they started to boo with a joke that was blue. I fucking died on my ass that night. And I'm stood in front of the committee. And they'd all just gone out of jail. Your zip was broke on your trousers, fatty. We could see the size of your tail. And you're not very good for a comic. And you peed in the sink. That's a farce. We restricted your pay. Have you got out this here? I said, ah, it's just a fucking club of your ass. You'll have missed Ken Dodd on This Is Your Life last week with you, right? Hey, that was fucking funny. Michael Aspel said, Ken, do you recognise this voice? You nothing cunt. <laughs> said, it's your very good friend, Lester Piggott. <laughs> Mrs Thatcher's just come back from Armenia. Armenia is near Azerbaijan, where there's trouble. Azerbaijan. Where the fuck's Azerbaijan fucking fucking jam? <laughs> Who gives a fuck about Azerbaijan fucking fucking jam? I mean, is where they had the earthquake, and the only good thing about an earthquake is if you stood in the gents, you don't have to shake your dick. <laughs> and it's been in all the British papers this week that John Travolta is gay. Now, that's fucking shocked me, that. That's like finding out John Wayne fucked his horse. No wonder he was in Greece, he was slapping it on his fucking arsehole. <laughs> Apparently, he's entered more rings than a fucking chip of heels elephant. I can't get to grips with homosexual. I'm sorry if there's any gay people in here, but that's fucking beyond me, that. How anybody can fall in love with a hairy, sweaty ass that's just had a shit is beyond me. Wear a condom. What fucking condom? I'm not having my dick looking like a fucking miniature bank robber. Avoid fucking casual sex. What the fuck is casual sex? Open neck shirt slacks. Hey, I just fucked you, baby. <laughs> Kenny Everett's going into hospital this week. They're probably going to remove Rock Hudson's wristwatch from his fucking arsehole. <laughs> it's one thing we should be thankful for. There's no AIDS in margarine. You know how that fucking spreads. <laughs> What's the matter with a big, hairy, fucking, fat, juicy pussy like? Fuck all, that's my ambition, not to die of cystitis of the tongue. <laughs> the last time I got fixed up was at Blackpool, October the 22nd, last year, I'll never forget it. Gorgeous blonde, blue eyes, big tits, I thought, ah, oh, chubby, are you gonna fuck her? Hand down a knickers, pair of sweaty bollocks. It was fucking Salomon Rushdie had come for the lights. I did get a fuck, God's fucking honour. I'm stood at the bar, I wasn't doing out ladies, I was just licking my eyebrows. <laughs> and I got my eye on this girl on the dance floor, legs up to a chin, which explained the beard later on. <laughs> the barman saw me looking at chubby, chubby, fuck off, chubby, fuck off, fuck off, chubby. Every lad in Blackpool's fucked there. Well, after a couple of pints, I thought, well, Blackpool's not that fucking big, is it? Like, it's not massive, is it? I walked across dead casual, I went, hi baby, would you like to come back to my room and watch a bit of TV? She said, oh, have you got cable? I said, no, but I've got some thick fucking strong rope, I can tie you down the <laughs> I said, what's your name? She said, fuck off. I said, oh, Russian, eh? <laughs> I'm not good with the pattern, so I did the obvious. I went, oh, a zip fucking lob. <laughs> she thought it was Duncan Goodyear in a fucking polo neck sweater. <laughs> I said, do you fancy stopping with me? She said, oh, I'm on a diet. I'm going early. I said, get it in your gob. It's only 25 fucking calories. <laughs> she said, excuse me, but I don't take semen in my mouth. Just the RAF and a couple of lads out the <laughs> Just thought I'd give you the mention. Yes, I'm in bed with her. Excuse me, let's pretend the fucking comic's still on. Anybody but like animals, will you take these fucking dogs for a walk over here? Bastards. A bit like the river, eh? Wide in the mouth, narrow in the neck and full of fucking shit. Swats. It's a funny world we live in, isn't it? 
Yeah, we can get a man on the moon, yet we can't get one on Martin and Navratilova. <laughs> I was in a pub the other day full of fucking lesbians. Even the pool table had no balls. <laughs> what about bringing my fucking kids into this world for? I don't. I have a little boy there, Ted. He said, Dad, where the babies come from? And I thought I was being quite educational. I said, Oh, the stork brings them, son. She said, Oh, who fucks the stork, Dad? <laughs> I'm in the garden the other day, weeding. And he's on the path and I heard this car slow down and I heard this fella's voice say, Hello, little boy. Would you come in my car for a fiver? I said, for a fiver? I'll come in your fucking mouth. I said, you little bastard. One day you'll have kids of your own. He said, I know, so will you, Dad. I wasn't going to come today, but it wasn't your fault. I've just looked at my diary and it's a year ago that I actually lost my father. And I'll never forget his last words. Fuck me, a bus! <laughs> I was born in the 40s, the 40s, when we had fuck all. Fuck all us. Remember yo-yos? I had a fucking yo. <laughs> Parents didn't want me. I had to make me on my own from the fucking maternity hospital. They've given me alphabet soup, I'd look in the dish, it spelled fuck off, fuck <laughs> The 40s, you won't remember the 40s, we had no fucking clothes. Man bought me a cap so I could look out the window. <laughs> that were the days when a hairdryer was a fucking chain near the oven door. We thought B-Day was before fucking D-Day. <laughs> you complained the camps, they had cockroaches, you used to put your fucking rent up for keeping pets. <laughs> The old days. I was saying to the wife yesterday, you know what it is on Tuesday, it's our silver wedding. Any chance of a fuck? She said, I suppose so, but don't be coming this every 25 fucking years. <laughs> ah, it's a woman's well. Women are supposed to be the weaker sex. Have you ever heard such fucking shite in your life? Have you ever tried to pull the fucking sheets back to your side of the bastard bed on the line? Oh, God. Have you ever tried making your wife or your girlfriend sleep on the fucking wet patch? <laughs> what about when you're having an argument with them? What's the first fucking thing they come out with? If you men had babies, you'd suffer. Of course we'd fucking suffer! Can you imagine a baby coming out of that little hole in the end of your cock? <laughs> At least your fucking selves. It's been one of them fucking weeks for me. Hey, the wife will be on the plane now. She's not going anywhere, she's just taking two inches off the fucking kitchen door for me. <laughs> Can I give you a bit of advice? Don't get married. I don't know why the fuck I got married, mate. I should have let her six brothers beat fuck out of us. Well, she's fucking greedy. She heats all the knives up in our house so I don't use the fucking butter. She's fucking jealous to death of me. Found a calendar in my pocket, wanted to know who June was. <laughs> She's got a fucking vicious streak. Told me the last cock she sucked before mine was Rock Hudson's. <laughs> hey, I made a fucking cry last night, lads, but I fucking hell. I pulled a hair out of her nose. She said our sex life wasn't very good. I said, don't you start fucking shouting at me, gobshite. I put a mirror on the ceiling. What were you doing? Lying in bed, busting your fucking spots. She said, I was better off with my first husband. At least I had two dresses to wear. I said, yes, because the cunt was a transvestite. <laughs> I was telling my mate, and he said, Roy, do what I did. He said, I got a banana. I'll give it a banana. I'll give it a bit of banana. I said, oh, banana wouldn't satisfy my wife. But I thought, that's a fucking good idea. I'll get a cucumber. I went to the fruit shop. I was pissed out my brain. I knocked all the fucking oranges on the floor. That's the first time I've heard man from Del Monte tell somebody to fuck off out the shop. <laughs> I took the cucumber to bed. I didn't say anything. I just gave her the little bit on the end. I went, hey, you bastard. She said, oh, oh. Well, she said, you're large tonight. I said, fuck off. 
I gave her the cucumber. She said, oh, oh. She said, what's that? I said, it's a cucumber. Well, I thought, fuck all about it the next morning. And I woke up and she's, oh, oh. I said, what the fucking matter with you? She said, that cucumber's repeating on me. <laughs> and I walked out the Italian restaurant. The waiter said, hey, where's that the man with the blood stuck and the grey hair? The fella said, no, it wasn't with me. He said, the fuck the man with no paper a spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> So he runs out the door and there's a bloke at the bus stop. He said, are you, you're uh, the fucking man with the blood stuff and the grey hair. He the fuck off there. He no paid for a spaghetti bolognese. He said, oh, he said, uh, I seen him going that house. He said, hey, I'm fucking sure it's a knocking shot. He said, the funny, it's gone through that door the last ten minutes. I've been stood here with a fucking hair done. So he goes over, knocks on the door and this, this tar comes. She said, yes. He said, a man with the blood stuff and the grey hair. He not a pair of for a spaghetti bolognese. She said, well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, he's with Margaret. Where the fuck are the Margaret? Where the fuck are the Margaret? It's a better room. She, it's number three. So he goes, bangs on the door, opens the door. This fella's only got his head straight between her legs, hasn't he? He said, oh, yo, you're a chick. He can't. <laughs> you leave my arrest and you're not a pair for the spaghetti bolognese. You're the one that fucking the blood soaked and the grey hair. And the bloke went... <laughs> Hang on, pal. He said there was a there was a fucking hair in your spaghetti bolognese. He said you're the fucking a cheeky bastard. Oh. You said the fucking hair in the spaghetti bolognese. You fucking do a dirty thing like a doctor. He said it's the same difference, pal. If I find any fucking spaghetti bolognese in that mock, she's not getting paid either. <laughs> Come on from work, he said, darling, hubby's here. And there's no answer to where the fucking hell is she? Yeah. I hope she's not at the bingo, she's gonna get my foot up her fucking ass. He had this pattern going on upstairs, thought, what the hell is that? Sneaked upstairs, opened the bedroom door, his wife's only lying on the eye and holding the left tit. He said, what's going on here? She said, oh darling, you've come home so unexpected, I think I'm having a heart attack. He said, fucking hell. Was downstairs, grabbed the phone, 999. He's just gonna talk to somebody, and his little boy pulled on his jacket. He said, Hey, Dad, Uncle Ted's in the wardrobe with nothing on. He said, You what? He said, Uncle Ted is in the wardrobe, that he's got nothing on. He said, You fucking. <laughs> Slammed the phone down, he went downstairs about 10 at a time, took the wardrobe door off his fucking hinges. And his brother was cowering in the corner with nothing on. He said, you rotten bastard, eh? Wife's having a heart attack and you're going around the house fighting the fucking kids. Hey, a girl said to me the other day, Roy, where are you going next week? I said, I'm in Liverpool. She's going to come with you. I'd love to see the Beatles. I said, the Beatles? I said, how old are you? She said, I'm 19. I said, they don't fucking inform you very often. I said, the Beatles are finished. If the Beatles finished 25 years ago. No, they didn't. They're always on the radio. I said, don't talk out, you fucking minge. <laughs> I said, the songs will live forever, but the Beatles are finished, pet. She said, do you know so much like? Are you an authority? I said, no, but I was in a pop group in 1962. I said, and they took off. Cherry and the pacemakers, the decoders, and we used to do all their numbers, Beatles numbers. She said, are you like, what? I said, Michelle, imagine if yesterday I was a fool on a hill or a real nowhere man lived in the yellow submarine in Penny Lane. I can't buy me love. I picture myself on a boat on the river on a good day sunshine with a lovely Rita Rita mate. She'd be a day tripper, I'd be a paperback writer. Listen, do you want to know a secret? I once had a girl, I should have said she once had me. She was just 17, Lady Madonna, eight days a week, but boy. Oh, she could carry that weight. They said you'd lose that girl. But she was good to me, you know. I felt fine. Like Lucy in the sky with diamonds on a magical mystery tour. See, if I fell under bang, 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 Maxwell Silverham, who was buried in strawberry fields forever, would you help Eleanor Rigby to pick up the rice in the church where the wedding has been? Would my baby be in black? Or would you just get up and dance to a song that was a hit before your mother was born? No, you get by with a little help. Help and meet somebody from your friends. No reply. I will get by and get by to the USSR where there's a revolution. See, I'm a loser and I know a place. Along the Long and winding road, it's an octopus's garden. You've a ticket to ride with a tax man saying, Please, please me. Wrapping up and chains, getting the tears of honey. He'd be fixing a hole to stop his mind from wandering. 
and come together because you've been treating me bad. Miser, I'd have been happy just to dance with you. So tell me why, Dr. Roberts, I'm a warrior. Tell me what you see as my guitar gently weeps. It won't be long. I don't feel like you can't do that. I'll twist and shout things we said today. Dizzy Miss Lizzie, mean Mr. Mustard. But she's a woman and I love her. How does she laugh when she knows I'm down? Hey, you. It's been a hard day's night. Will you still feed me? Will you still need me when I'm 64? You say yes. I say no. You say I don't know. Take all my love in here, there, everywhere. Don't hide your love away. It's getting better all the time. I got to get you into my life for the benefit of Mr. Kite, because I just seen a face on the tip of my tongue. Oh, bloody, oh, bloody, let it be. I want to be your man. I should have known better with a girl like you, but we can work it out, honey. Pa, drive my car, give peace a chance. Don't write to Sergeant Pepper's lonely ass club in Norwegian Wood on another day. Follow the sun from across the universe with love from me to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bless you. Well, just in case you were wondering, there was 97 titles there. He had some clever cunt over here. He said, oh, it was written on his eyelids. He fucking went like that. What the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck? Nice to see the old fucking thalidomide learning to talk there, isn't it? Hey, it's a cracking night tonight. I'm really enjoying it, because the other night we were sent to Toxic to Liverpool where all the troubles is. Fuck it, now. I'm seeing how like it. So I just West Indian with a brick. I said, oh, fucking hell are you going to do with that like? I said, oh, deposit for a coloured telly. <laughs> he heard me accent. He said, you big fat Geordie bastard. I said, don't call me a fucking Geordie. <laughs> bastard, yes, but... <laughs> I said, you big fat double chin, four eyed, hairy ass, big bellied bastard. I said, ah, you've recognised this. <laughs> I said, two can play that game, wog. <laughs> and about ten of them walked around the corner. I thought, fucking hell, I've said something wrong here now. Am I gonna fucking get out of this? Hey, I can run when I'm shitting myself. I was off like shit off a stick. I ran down to the docks. I was 20 yards in front of her. When I got to the dock side, the ferry was 10 feet from the side of the world tube. You can do one or two things here, son. You can be quite easily be made into a fucking vegetable. Or you could dive in the water. It will be cold, but you do have some lemon sips in the car. I fucking dived in. Nearly broke my neck on a fucking push chair. <laughs> the water was bastard freezing. The fucking big fresh teddies floating past. Used Jurex hanging out me fucking lug all. Fucking salmon. Still in its fucking tins. I put myself on a phone and went, Ah, you scouts bastard fucker! Locke said, I wouldn't have done it if I was you. I said, why? So we're just coming in. <laughs> That's a fallacy, rape and all. A woman can run much faster with a dress up than a bloke can with his fucking trousers down. It's funny, you take your wife for a game of badminton, she can't hit the fucking shuttlecock. You take her for a game of squash, she can't hit the fucking ball. Put her in the car and she hits every fucking thing she sees. I brought the wife to hold her there. She said, oh, should we stop at the Hotel Yumka? I said, that's a YMCA, dozy bastard. <laughs> we booked in a hotel. He said, five pounds because of the view. I said, well, how much is it if we don't fucking look? <laughs> I said, do you mind if I look round? He said, you fucking look round to me, fatty. He said, it's a five for each and a five for the dog. I said, I haven't got a fucking dog. He said, no, we have. You've got his room. <laughs> he sent for the police. This uh, copper said, well, I'll ask you a couple of questions. And if you don't answer them, you're going down the police station. It's shit hot. <laughs> oh, I said, fire away. You don't fucking frighten me. He said, well, what's the series of traffic lights? I said, oh, <laughs> every fucking knows that. He said, what other then? I said, what fucking thing are you... Um, like colours come on. <laughs> Say, what order? I said, well, like, uh, fucking, um, don't tell us, I passed one yesterday, I know I did. Uh, 
red, amber, green. He said, what comes after green? I said, oh, well, you've got me there, because I've usually fucked off by then. I never hang about green. <laughs> I went to court, £400 fine, bound over for three years, licence endorsed for 12 months. I thought, well, if a man can't have a lager shandy. Next case, it was up with a vicar from Cottingham. He'd been interfering with choir boys. I thought, the poor bastard. You'll get fucking 50 years here. The judge said, two pound fine, bound over a day and a half, and will you try not to be naughty again? So I jumped up, I said, excuse me, am I fucking hearing things here or what? <laughs> I mean, I only had a drink, and that filthy bastard, <laughs> be, being Chinese, would have called him Pork Em Young. <laughs> The magistrate said, look, sit down, fat bastard. I heard that choir sing, they needed fucking. <laughs> Fuck off. I leapt out of bed this morning, up one, two, down one, two, then the other sock. <laughs> Grabbed our lass by the ankles, pulled around the bedroom. <laughs> she always looks forward to that first drag on the morning. <laughs> I said, you know, it's a year ago today, we buried your mother. She said, eee, fucking hell, is it? I said, aye, I must take the shovel back. <laughs> My little boy come in the bedroom, hey, Dad, where do I come from? I've just asked our mum. She said, the sugar bowl. I said, aye, that's about the fucking size of it, son. <laughs> You know, it's only 14 weeks to Christmas. I was just thinking about it there. It doesn't seem five minutes since my wife has stood under the mistletoe last Christmas day like that. She's still fucking there now. <laughs> I went out for a jog this morning, because you can see I'm obviously fit. Come on, girls, from the side, bear Reynolds. All right, this fucking side then, all right. Must be awful for Bert Reynolds there when he's walking through Hollywood and all the lads are shouting, Now chubby, you fat cunt! <laughs> I'm having a bit of a weight problem with my feet at the moment. Can't keep them out the fucking pantry. <laughs> it's awful when somebody cleans your shoes and you have to take their fucking word for it. <laughs> I'm on a garlic diet. I've lost three pounds and six fucking mates. <laughs> you say, what's the matter with you, Chubby? I think you're a fucking hypochondriac. I said, I've got a bad tummy. He said, did you have anything to eat yesterday? I said, when I woke up, I had six eggs, half pound of bacon, half pound of sausage, half pound of mushrooms, a bit of fried bread, a bit of plain bread, a yo-yo, yogurt, a pack of crisps. And I went away and had a Kit Kat and read the paper. Ten to twelve, I was at the canteen, I soup in the sweet. Well, sweet was apple pie and custard, so I had it twice. I had roast beef and Yorkshire puddings. I had two soups, it was minestrone, and George didn't want this. I thought, I'm not wasting fucking thirty pence. <laughs> About one o'clock, I had a hamburger, three o'clock, where I was working. I got an ice cream, you know, with a chocolate on top. I think you call them a ninety-nine. A tender flower was at home. The wife had me egg, bacon, sausage, beans and chips ready. I got washing and chips and went down the club and I called them a fish shop. I had fish and chips while and some mushy peas. Fuck me, when I got down the club, there was a wedding on. The lad said, oh, fuck on, there. So I went over, I had a sandwich, a bowl of on, you know, and a bit of cake. I just wanted to be nice. Then on the way home, I called them the Chinese. I had to make food, young curry sauce, mixed veg. He said, hang on, drop your trousers. There's your trouble, you've only one fucking ass. <laughs> I called him the hairdressers today, can you tell girls? He said, I've done your head, will you like anything on it? I said, ah, a pair of knickers, you've made me look like a right cunt. <laughs> He said, you know, if I shaved all your hair off, son, nobody would recognise you. I said, you shave all my hair off and no fucker will recognise you. <laughs> he said, I was just feeling it there, it's just like our lass's pussy, I said. Oh, God. <laughs> you were lass's pussy's a lot stronger than that. <laughs> yeah. You've been dead good, yeah. It's nearly time to choose to go. I want, to, I want to let you get home, get your bushes home. Now, don't forget, if you're driving, be careful, because I'm fucking walking. <laughs> if you see any arrows on the road, form a circle, wait for the cavalry. <laughs> Come to a red light, stop, look all around for traffic. If there's nothing coming, ring that ask for me if you say fucking chubby sent you.
It's only good clean fun, that's what I'll put it down to. Pay for now, go to court, fuck them. <laughs> you see that in the paper this morning? Barry Manilow walked into a wall with a hard on and still broke his fucking nose. <laughs> that barrister that got Len Fairclough off is getting right fucking cocky now. Reckons he can get Stevie Wonder a driving license. Cause he more don't come down off the chair. <laughs> Grabbed Esmeralda, took her to the top. She said, Eek was. <laughs> you're not fucking bad looking when you close up. You know what I mean? <laughs> she said, How big is your dick? You know what I mean? You know what I She said, Give us a glimpse. She went, Love. <laughs> she said, Have you ever had a blowjob? He said, how do you think I got this fucking hump on me, man? <laughs> Little boy said to his dad, oh, Dad, I've just been to the shops and lightning couldn't keep up with us. He said, well, we've had that tortoise 20 years now, son. He said, oh, nobody but he, could, but he couldn't keep up with us, Dad. He said, look, I got him off Grandad. Granddad's passed away now, and you know a tortoise's life is four to a human beings. I mean, he must be 70 or 80 now. It's not worrying about it, because the day he passes away, I'll, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to build a little thing at the bottom of the garden, like a shrine, a little hole, and put him in, and we're going to paint all the rocks white, and put his name on it, lightning, and you can have all your friends round, and we'll have jelly, blancmange, cakes, and you know, oh, Dad, can we fucking kill him now? <laughs> We've had some good nights here, haven't we? Hey, last, I wish you'd been with us last night, because I wanted everybody to be there. I went to one of these wife-swapping parties. You know, you all throw your keys on the table. I ended up with a fucking air box. <laughs> I got talking to a right ugly tart. If she'd been around at the same time as the Lord, there'd have been another fucking commandment. She smoked that many dog ends in half an hour, I swore she was going to have a shit in the street. <laughs> I said, if you let me take it home, I'll drink champagne from your slipper. She said, well, you'll soon be pissed, you fat cunt, I'll take it well. <laughs> I stopped the car on the outside of Middlesbrough, and we come the old, I've ran out of petrol routine. She said, oh, what a shame, Chubby, I was going to take you home and give you a gobble. <laughs> I said, you're not married, are you? She said, oh, yeah, well, that's in Durham jail. I said, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> He's not a hard case, is he? She said, oh, no, no. He was just depressed, you know, with him being unemployed for about six months. He decided to rob the post office. So he put a pair of my knickers over his head and ran in the post office. Well, I must have turned him on. When the police arrived, he was stood having a wank. <laughs> I took up her a meal. She looked at the menu. She said, uh, I guess I'll have steak. I said, I fucking guess again. <laughs> I called the waitress over. I said, over. <laughs> I said, wine, please. She said, what year, sir? I said, well, we'd like to fucking know if it's all right with you. <laughs> I said, I Fancy this here, Le Da Vinci, Divore and Sons. She said, that's the people who print the menu, Dozy Cunt. <laughs> but to be honest with you, I really like this girl. I mean, her pants were so tight, I could read her lips. <laughs> we stopped the car. We were getting over a fence. She said, Chubby, <laughs> I feel like a commando. I said, well, what the fucking hell are you doing with me, then? <laughs> She said, there's a bull over there. Oh, I hope he doesn't charge us. I said, I hope he doesn't. I've only got a fucking quid left. <laughs> when I got the knickers off, I said, oh, hang on a minute. You've a bald fanny. She said, pardon? I said, you've a bald minge. You've no hairs. She said, do you want to screw me or race fucking greyhounds? <laughs> She 
It's always the same when you don't like something. If you don't like yellow, some fucker will buy you a yellow shirt, won't they? I get to the airport, my aeroplane always happens to be the little fucking red-leaded Dan Air one on the end. <laughs> the one fucking Buddy Ollie just got off. <laughs> fucking Glenn Miller pasty stuck to the bastard seat. <laughs> I was that nervous when I walked up the stairs, instead of turning right, I turned left and I'm in the cockpit. Looked out like a woman's minge to me, to be honest. With you. <laughs> I said to the wife, get back, get fucking back. She said, I said, get, get fucking back now. She said, is there something wrong? I said, something wrong? All the fucking clocks are wrong for a start. <laughs> I said, it's only got half a fucking steering wheel. <laughs> Do now we got off the tarmac with a tear that was lodged in her knickers. <laughs> We just got above the clouds and the stewardess said, Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Captain Robertson and the crew, we're sorry about the three hour delay. I said, Excuse me? It's only been an hour. She says, Yes, but we have to spray the crops. <laughs> she said, What we're going to do is going to have a game of bingo. The numbers are on the back of your emergency cover card. All the fours, watch the doors. <laughs> Number three, we well above the sea. On its own, this fucking parachute. <laughs> Number ten, oxygen. Anyway, up the aeroplane, blind pilot. I said, excuse me, fuck off. She said, one or two of the passengers seem a little bit nervous, so we'll have a game of ice spy with my little eye, and I bags eye going first. I spy with my little eye. So the beginning with LR. Well, I'm quite good at this. I went straight away. Lucky cunt. <laughs> long room. She said no. I said LR. Long fucking room. She said no. Cunt doesn't want me to win this, does she? <laughs> fucking hell. Bamba Gascoigne. Second guess. Woo! Leather rack. She said no. I said LR. Leather fucking rack. <laughs> she said no. I won't have fuck out of when I gotta go, yes. <laughs> I said, we'll give in. She said, loose rivet. <laughs> I have a motto in life it's doing to others as they're doing to you, then fuck off before the police get there. <laughs> Two ladies talking once said, Doris, you bastard. I've been fucking looking for you. You've been telling everybody my husband has a wart on the end of his cock. She said, may this God's honor on my kid's life, I never said that. I said it feels like a wart on the end of his cock. <laughs> You're probably looking at me and thinking, look at that fat bastard. Ah, there'll be a few wet clitorises in here tonight. <laughs> A few soggy piss flaps went out, Benny. <laughs> now, right, lads, we were only put on this earth because vibrators can't buy a fucking round of drinks. <laughs> There's a blind fella outside. I said, Excuse me, your cock's hanging out. He said, Don't say me tarts fucked off. <laughs> In a pub round the corner, lad shouting his mouth off. I said, How the fuck? Come on, you bastard. <laughs> He'll be off school a fucking week. <laughs> I'm dead pleased to be here tonight. I've just rang the wife there. She was a bag of nerves, which shocked me because usually she's only a fucking bag. <laughs> I said, What are you doing, darling? She said, oh, I'm having a plate of mushy peas. I fancy a bubble bath. <laughs> Well, she's got an inflamed orifice. For you thick fuckers, that's a sore cunt. I think a dicky bear got down a nickel. She said she's got thrush. So I've spent the other day, I bought her that record by Madonna like a virgin. Took it out of its sleeve, there's no fucking hole in the middle. That's not my favourite Madonna record. I like Material Girl. 
Only because I once went out with one. Glass eye, plastic hip, fucking rubber mins. <laughs> she got the sack from the sperm bank for fucking drinking on the job. <laughs> what a kinky twat she was. Wasn't satisfied with tiddling a fanny with a feather. Wanted the whole fucking chicken. <laughs> She was a bus conductor, she let me go all the way for fucking 40 pence. I put my hand inside her neck as I thought, fucking hell, she sat on a broken bottle. Skinny as no, I put my hand on her, slapped me one fucking face. She was pregnant, I don't know how far gone she was, but when I put my cock in, somebody bit it. She was only little, bless her. Kept tripping over the string on the tampax. <laughs> Should have seen the size of her ass. It was fucking like that. Sat on me face. I couldn't hear me fucking stereo. <laughs> yes, she said, there's a rumour going on. You have a 12-inch cock. I said, I know how I fucking started it. <laughs> I said, my name's Royston, you can call me Roy if you like. And she said, well, my name's Persephone. You can fuck off. <laughs> when the wife come downstairs this morning, I had a right headache. I keep telling her, when you get out of bed, it's fucking feet fest. <laughs> I said, where were you last night? I was mugged. It's like, mugged my bollocks. I never went to bed till 5 to 12 and you went in this fucking house slag. I was mugged, she said. A lad jumped out with a knife and said, I want all your money. I said, I keep it in my knickers. So he fiddled about my knickers for half an hour. I said, you don't keep money in your knickers. She said, no, I had to write him a check. <laughs> Did you ever watch your wife on the morning? <laughs> Death warmed up, aren't they? My wife will have a fag and then a cup of tea, then a cup of coffee, then another fag, then another fag, then a cup of tea. Then she'll ring her mother and fucking slag me off. <laughs> what a cunt I was. I never got into this time. You know what she's waiting for? To be honest with you. Radio 1, our tune. She listens to Simon Bates and she sits there crying her fucking eyes out. The story was so funny the other day, I thought I'll have to do this on stage. I taped the fucking thing. This was our tune the other day. Listen to this. I have a lovely letter here from a Richard Hitchin. Dick to his friends. Dick Hitchin. Dick has a hump on his back, two wooden legs, no roof in his mouth, one ear. But is he bothered? Is he fuck? He knew the Balls family from next door, but he never met the daughter. May I feel you? One day he was going down to the chemist for some condoms for the dog. It forced the dog to swallow the condom, so when it had a shit, it come out a little plastic bag. <laughs> then he bumped into me, I feel you. Well, boys and girls, it was love at first sight. Because she had a hump on her back. Two wooden legs, no roof in her mouth, one ear, one eye, and no hair. Yes, she was a complete fucking slaphead. <laughs> She'd obviously been eating too many Gary Baldy biscuits. But Dick wasn't bothered. He'd never had a girlfriend that had to go up on him before. She's only small. She kept tripping over the string on her tampax. But she had a full-time job modelling for darts trophies. <laughs> she was telling Dick about the day she was nearly killed. She was walking under a ladder and the budgie shit on her head. <laughs> They'd hold hands on a night talking about the day they would never need their legs anymore. And they could make a coffee table. One night after a bottle of Lambrusca from Marks and Spencer's, six ninety nine on the top shelf near the door, but I don't touch the fucking stuff myself. They decided to have a fuck. 
they nearly caught fire. Nine months later, a little boy was born, Thomas. He was born with a hump on his back, two wooden legs, no roof in his mouth, one ear, one eye, no hair. The kids at school were very cruel, they called him Tommy Moto. They shouted, your quad is soon, you ugly cunt. The teacher felt sorry, he devised the school play, it was called Thomas Loves Esmeralda. His mum and dad were in the audience that night, sat at the front, when he was nearly killed. He was pushed from the top of the church. Esmeralda misunderstood when he said, Toss us off. <laughs> the school caught fire. Thomas and his mum and dad were burned to the ground. They built a new school in honour of Thomas and his mother and father. They decided to call the new school after them. From that day to this, it's been known as Daft Cunt Comprehensive. <laughs> the song they've asked me to play on this special occasion is an old favourite of mine. It started with a cyst. <laughs> Thank you very much. Buy in a good crowd, it's beautiful places. I fucking love this. Don't you laugh at the beer, by the way. You could be all flat and fucking weak yourself one day. <laughs> I'm chuffed to bits. I've just signed a new two year contract today with Granada. Mind you, if I miss a payment, they take the fucking set back within a <laughs> week. I was lying in bed this morning, my little boy come in, piece of paper and a pen. You must have done this a thousand times. I took it off him and drew a little animal. I put antlers on it. I said, what's that? Sonny said, I don't know that. I said, well, Santa Claus has one. Calls it Rudolph. Come on. I said, no, I don't. I said, it rhymes with beer, beer, thingy. No, I said, I don't know. I, don't know. I said, no, wait, the drawing's not that fucking bad. Your man calls your dad one. He said, oh, it's a cunt. <laughs> I get me on back, he was looking out the bedroom window, he said, hey dad, what's a thing there between the milkman's horse's legs? I said, well, that could be a dick. Hampton tool, weapon cock, prick shaft, bell end, lots of fucking things, that son. <laughs> it's a big one, that, isn't it? I said, well, it's probably seen another horse, it's got what we call a hard on. Oh, because I asked our mum and she said it was nothing. I said, ah, well, your mother's been fucking spoiled over the years. <laughs> I said, let me get out of this fucking house. I went to the supermarket. I felt a bit of a sore throat coming on, so I thought I'd get myself a nice lolly. I just went over to the freezer. I opened the lid. I couldn't believe it. There was a man's cock in the freezer. I went, no, what the fucking hell's this? A man's prick with a purple bell end. I called the girl over. I said, oh, hey, oh, oh, hey. Fucking see this here. She said, what's this, a cock in the freezer? She said, keep your voice down, it's only a cock. I said, oh yeah, it's only a cock. Look at the date, it should have been sucked weeks ago. <laughs> you argue with a woman, mark my words, they all come out with the same line. Oh yes, but if you men had babies, you'd suffer. Course we fucking suffer! Imagine a baby coming out of that hole in your fucking bell end there! <laughs> Listen girls, I've got some information for you. Any daft bastard can have a baby. You don't have to sit up all night wondering whether the fucking thing's yours or not. <laughs> Hey, my luck's changing, lads. Hey, I found a brand new, wait for it, spanking fucking mountain bike yesterday. Yeah. We 
was just lying there near this dead cyclist. I couldn't get his fucking boots off. Reebok. I broke a mirror last week. I thought, fuck me, seven years of bad luck. But I've rang Ken Dodd's solicitor. He thinks he can get me probation. It's a funny world we live in now, eh? Do you ever think about things like, if moths like the light, why don't they come out during the fucking day? <laughs> if Alexandra Graham Bell invented the telephone, who the fuck did he ring? <laughs> Aunt Mice Lucky, a mouse walks in the room, the first thing a woman does, jumps on the chair, lifts the fucking dress up. You can see the mouse going, fucking hell, what? <laughs> I enjoy your wank, don't you, lads? Oh, you should wank. I mean, your hand's never going to leave you for another fucking arm, is it? <laughs> no, I'm happily married. But my wife's a little bit jealous of me. Found a calendar in my pocket the other day, wanted to know who June was. <laughs> I do things for her to please her. You know, she stopped me smoking in bed. Reckons when we make love, she can't balance the ashtray on her ass anymore. <laughs> I took her to Blackpool for the weekend last weekend. She went, oh, fucking hell. I've left the iron on, the house will burn down. I said, no, it won't. I've left the fucking tap running. <laughs> That's my luck, Tubby. Go fishing, catch nothing. Go to an orgy, catch every fucking thing. <laughs> I got pulled up on the M6 tonight, yeah. Copper said, uh, have you been drinking, sir? I said, have I one or two? <laughs> yes, but have you been drinking heavily? I said, I've had one fucking few. <laughs> Why do you ask? He said, you're on your fucking lawnmower. <laughs> he said, where did you come from? I said, the slip road. He said, well, clever bastard, it says stop. I said, yeah, but I slowed down. <laughs> yes, but it says stop. I said, well, it doesn't make any fucking difference to me. I slowed right down the first gear. He said, it says stop. I said, it's the same fucking difference. He said, it is, is it, fat cunt? <laughs> Took his trudging out. He said, right, do you want me to stop or slow fucking bastard down? <laughs> I've been doing the season at Blackpool. I, I love Blackpool because you can always come for your holidays because you always go on the lovely colour. Blue. <laughs> tower reminds me of the wife. Man, not everybody's been up the tower, have they? <laughs> Getting rough there now. I saw four lads beating an old woman up. Copper said, why didn't you help? I said, I don't know who started it. <laughs> this fellow went to the spam bank. He said, excuse me. Is this where you buy that spunk stuff? <laughs> the doctor said, well, we don't actually buy it, sir. It's a voluntary service. It's like giving blood. Oh, I say, you don't give us fuck all, then. <laughs> Did you get a cup of tea and a biscuit? <laughs> the doctor said, well, we can arrange a cup of tea and a biscuit, if that's what's bothering you. I say, well, I'm here now. I may as well roll my sleeve up. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor said, oh, I think you're a little bit naive. You don't take it out of your arms, sir. You masturbate. See, you are. What? Have a wonky, you know. <laughs> You're fucking joking, aren't you? The doctor said, not, not actually here. Just come with me. He took him to this cubicle. He gave him some mucky magazines. He said, you see that little plastic cup there? I'd like you to masturbate into that cup. And when you've blown it... <laughs> Put the lid back on the cup, try and not let the air get out. it, we'll analyse it, and if it's any good, we'll use it. And the magazines are to get you going. He said, oh, yeah, that seems all right, eh? Okay, then, that's okay with me, yeah. Shut the door, then. <laughs> Two sugars. <laughs> so he's having a look at these magazines. Fucking look at the minge on that. <laughs> A ginger clout. <laughs> and he, uh, oh, oh. 
Because I don't have that on some fuckers watching me. <laughs> some bastards taking photographs of me. He grabs a chair, looks into the next cubicle. There's only a fellow lying on a black reclining leather bed. And a nurse giving him a gobble. <laughs> Another big nurse rubbing her sweaty minge in that poor fucker's face. <laughs> He grabbed his magazines, he went back to the desk, he said, excuse me, fuck face, can I have a word with you, please? <laughs> it's obviously round the, uh, a case of if your fucking face fits, eh? <laughs> I'm, oh, obviously, I'm just a stranger. Do you know, I didn't have to come here this morning, you know. No, I could have played snooker with the lads. I come here goodness of my heart, and you were cheeky, on you? You give me them mucky magazines, which I'm fit to look at, showed me that cubicle, Told me to play with myself, which I don't usually do. And the next cue, well, the man's getting a gobble, and another nurse drumming there, sweaty mutton, that poor fucker's face. The doctor said, Well, you're not a member of Booper, are you? now in the clubs as a folk singer because every time I sing people go oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> is it me or is it fucking cold <laughs> I woke up this morning with two red rosy cheeks on my face how old that's got a fucking ass on the pillar I'll never know <laughs> I've just snapped a dog off a lamppost I love the snow, it makes my fucking garden look like everybody else's. <laughs> well, I know I you're going to be good tonight. Like you you always are, the, 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 wherever I am. <laughs> Maybe last night I was at Darling and I did uh, club it. No, don't laugh at anybody from Darling. Must be awful coming from somewhere where the fucking football season finishes in September. <laughs> for you. These two bobbies were talking and one said, hey, you know that young girl that's just going to the police for us? I'm right there tonight, right up the old fucking piss flaps. Whoa. <laughs> he said, fuck off, you lying cunt. You couldn't get your own in the brothel with a virus took out your fucking ear. <laughs> said, tonight, when you're getting your panda car tonight, just tune into my frequency. He said, I'm meeting her about ten to nine. He picks his tart up at ten to nine. And he's talking to her, telling her how much he thought of her and all the fucking shites coming out. <laughs> and he's passing the fiesta and that hot dog store was there. So he gets out of the panda car, goes across, gets a hamburger, gets back into the car. As he's pulling away, he dropped it on the floor. She said, oh, you're not going to go down there and eat that, are you? He said, quick, say fucking hamburger. Quick. <laughs> I've been having a bit of a weird problem with me feet. Can't keep them out the fucking fish shop. You <laughs> see, you are what you are in life because of what you eat in the womb. Yeah? I had a twin brother, I never fucking saw him. Apparently he was out there. <laughs> see, I can feel you women undressing me with your eyes now. I could have been one of the Chippendales, you know. Could have been the fucking Chester Draws. <laughs> I'm the nearest thing that Mel Gibson my wife will get. Fucking lethal weapon. I hate being fucking fat because you always get the blame for other people's fats. I first realised I was fat when I was a little boy. We all got invited to a fancy dress party. Dad made me swallow some string, pulled it out my ass, put a knot in it, now went as a fucking conker. Hey, the old days. Remember the old days? I went to school with some lads. There was tiger, bear, moose, rat, foxy. I mean, these lads were fucking animals. <laughs> I watched them on bonfire night tie a rocket to a cat's tail. I was fucking disgusted. The cat was over the moon. <laughs> I have a boy now who's an evil little bastard. I caught him putting the cat flap in the fucking budgie cage. 
He said to me yesterday, Dad, what have you got your license number tattooed on your bum for? I said, I haven't. Your fucking daft mother went into me with a car. <laughs> she just failed the driving test for the fifth bastard time. When the examiner said, what's the most popular sign on the motorway, she said, pick your own fucking strawberries. <laughs> She's as thick as one of Big Daddy's Ted's. <laughs> I knew she was in a bad mood. I said, has the paper boy come? She said, no, he stood on the path wanking. <laughs> she loves animals. I give her a fucking rabbit punch. <laughs> it's our anniversary this week. 20 years. Fucking hell. The Black Death only lasted four, didn't it? All those years ago when I said, whoever this shoe fits, I'll marry. Trust her to take a fucking twelve and a half. <laughs> she took me home to meet her father and he presented me with a lovely little silver bullet. Still lodged in the crack of my arse now. <laughs> he said, I'd like my daughter back in the house by ten o'clock. I said, fuck off. <laughs> She'll be back in here at seven. You're not fucking piling me off with her. <laughs> Things we do for you. I was at the doctor's yesterday. I said, hey, doctor, every time I sneeze, I get a hard on. He said, have you took out the footage? She'll be a sedai, Pepper. <laughs> do us a favour, fuck off. <laughs> She's not going to afford the wood and have your fucking mouth boarded up. <laughs> I can go back a few years here at this pub, me. The first time I come here, I did a policeman's ball. And you know what fucking policeman's balls are like? <laughs> I walked onto this stage and I told a joke about two puffs up a back alley and a policeman shone his torch. He said, oh, the fucking hell's going on here? <laughs> and one of them ran off and he grabbed the other one. He said, you dirty bastard. <laughs> if I'd caught your friend, this fucking truncheon had gone right up his ass. And this voice said, I'm in the bin. <laughs> Hey, I get sent to some shit houses, me, darling. <laughs> I goes to this club the other night. Hey, fucking great club. Honestly, I get fixed up with this tart. I, I walked across dead casual, you know what I mean? I said, hi, do you fuck? <laughs> <laughs> she said, I suppose I'll have to, you smooth-talking bastard. <laughs> I took her home and she had a brother and he kept saying, tell her now, ma'am, you're putting hand on the mot. <laughs> tell her now, ma'am, you're putting hand on the tits. I said, we're making sandwiches, son. He said, I know for a fact that will last doesn't take salad cream. <laughs> I'm telling her now, ma'am, you're touching her ass and kissing the bum. I said, the way I'm on here, I said, I've got a fucking mallet in the car. <laughs> He said, why don't you bang it in with your ass like the milkman does? <laughs> Things we do for you women. Do you know I'm drinking gin now just to get used to air fucking breath? <laughs> I got another satellite dish in this week. Don't you get some good films on the satellite dish? When's the night the fly was on? Have you seen the fly? I was shitting my fucking self. <laughs> I was sat there with the biggest rolled up fucking newspaper you've ever seen in your life. I thought, ah, come on, you cunt. <laughs> there was a film on on Friday night that should never have been allowed to be shown. Six young lads fucked a young girl in the back of a 1925 Rolls Royce and she had diarrhea. It was called Pretty Shitty Gangbang. <laughs> I went to see that the other night, Silence of the Lambs. I thought it was about a farmer that gags his fucking sheep. <laughs> it's about a fella that eats people. And you know there's a lad in America now, copycat that bastard? He's ex-17 homosexuals. You know how he got caught? The police passed the house and he was having his dinner. <laughs> Leg and lips and mushy knees. Covered in HP torso with the strangest fucking knob of butter they'd ever seen. <laughs> the 
said, when did you first suspect him? He said, when he gave us the cold shoulder. <laughs> E.T.'s on the fucking roof. <laughs> I hope you don't think that's me farting. I'm a lot fucking louder than that. <sighs> hey, have you been to see that film yet, ladies? Ghost. Did you be good to go and see Ghost? Can I ask you something? Did you cry at the end? Yeah. Fucking so did I. <laughs> if she really loved him, right? Why didn't she kill her bastard self? <laughs> so she could be with him. Typical fucking split ass, that isn't it, eh? <laughs> Fuck you, Jack. I'm all right. Go on. You fuck off to heaven. Go on. I'll suck a few more bell ends. <laughs> Women, the Lord give them two sets of lips so they could piss and moan at the same time. <laughs> hey, I'm dead fucking unlucky. Well, maybe me, honestly, I'm. I'd, I'd, I'd get this to her one night and I thought, I'd given her the patter, you know. She'd had a blackout the night before. She'd seen him again on the Saturday. <laughs> I took her behind this club at Bramble's Farm. <laughs> ah, I fucking thought that was where you're from. I thought, ah. Head straight between her legs. I said, come here, you. <laughs> I said, I wish I'd brought me torch. She said, so do I. You've been munching the fucking grass for ten minutes. <laughs> I said, bye, your fanny's big as nit, as nit, as nit, as nit. <laughs> she said, you don't have to repeat everything. I said, it wasn't, it was a fucking echo. <laughs> Hey, I might be fat, but I've got a cock like a blind cobbler's thumb. <laughs> we had a bloke at our door, no. He said, uh, I said, no, that would give us a chance, Christmas, because I thought it was the fucking Nash. <laughs> he said, are you Colin Brown? I said, no, I'm chubby. I said, that's our dad. He said, can I have a word with him? I said, yeah. I said, oh, dad, there's a fella here from the Social Security office. He said, uh, Mr. Brown, he said, Margaret Thatcher's government are now paying compensation for Second World War victims. Is anything you'd like? Oh, Dad said, you cheeky bastard. The fucking war finished 36 years ago. Before you go out of this path and close that fucking gate, I tell you what you can do for me, pal. Give us a pound an inch from the end of my dick to my testicles. <laughs> he said, well, if that's what you want, drop your underpants, took a tape measure out of his pocket. He went, one, two... Three. Where's your balls, Mr. Brown? He said, they're on the fucking beach, you don't care. <laughs> Funny world we live in, I've just been reading the paper. Mike Tyson's charged with a rape. Who had the fucking bottle to tell him? <laughs> oh, Mike, you're charged with rape. Not my fucking idea. Fuck all the door, mate, mate. <laughs> uh, she won't be the first person he's bruised around the ring. She was supposed to be on a period, so why didn't she throw the towel in? <laughs> if he hadn't been a leper, she'd have been saved by the fucking bell. She stood up in court and said, He fucked me twice. He nearly fucked you once. She said, I want a rematch. <laughs> Did you see Martina Navratilova over on the telly when she was crying? How come we get a man on the moon yet? We can't get one on air, can we? The lawyer said to her, How many women have you had? She said, Fifteen, love. <laughs> and what comes between your legs? She said, Juice. <laughs> and why did you throw Judy out? She said, New balls, please. <laughs> I always watch the papers and see what's going on. Do you know there was a storm in Bangladesh last week? Killed a hundred thousand people. Isn't that fucking frightening, that? And we complain about the bastard weather. A hundred thousand people wiped out them. I thought of something funny. I thought of two sharks going through the water and one saying the other one, have you shit? <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, you fucking stink. I said, I know, I had an Indian last night.
You say I said that, I'll fucking deny it. Because my kid plays with all the packy kids in the street. There's about 200 of them. Wouldn't care, there's only three fucking houses. <laughs> they always invite him to their parties, you know. I think they like to play that game. Pin the tail on the honky. <laughs> I come down this morning, I said, where's your mother? Oh, she's got to the vet with the dog, Dad. It's best to see your drums. It's my daughter playing that bastard music. <laughs> so I said, turn that fucking record player down. She said, his curiosity killed the cat. I said, yes, and it's fucked the dog up and all. <laughs> We're animal lovers in our house. I bought the wife a parrot, someone to talk to while I was shopping. Well, you give parrots millet and seed. She's been giving it beans on toast. Egg and fucking chips. It's six fucking foot now, where's 14 stone? And you want to hear the way it talks to me. Said <laughs> so this morning, pretty Polly wants a biscuit. Fat cunt. <laughs> she come back from the vet. I said, is the dog all right? Because I've had the dog 16 years and it's my best friend. Now I tell when the dog's getting old, can't you? The other day I threw it a stick. You can see the dog going, aye, there it fucking goes. There. <laughs> Fat cunt will expect me to chase that now. <laughs> Well, they can fuck off. <laughs> Good house dog. Nobody comes up that path without their letting us know. Phew. He's a fucking big turd on the carpet. <laughs> so watch dog. Watch some bastard pinch our video on Friday night. <laughs> I might have to go early. I've left him on his own and the fucking neighbours are Cantonese. Well, it's a bit much when you kick the dog's ball into the garden and you've got to go and ask for the fucking dog back, isn't it? <laughs> hey, what a good crowd. I wish I had a better act. <laughs> that one of them weeks we had the doctor in. He said to me, I don't like the look of you. Well, that's should be. I said, you fucking don't. <laughs> he said, she's got an acute angina. I said, ah, your tits are buddy. They're not <laughs> Hey, she's fucking funny, I will ask, man. She's got a good head for money, she's got a slot here. <laughs> well, she's at that age now where she's going through the change in my ass pocket when I'm asleep. <laughs> Just been arguing before I come out, I said, come on, put that fucking knife down. <laughs> I'm bossing this house and don't you forget it. Anymore, you slaver, and you'll make these fucking beds yourself. <laughs> I said, what's the matter with your face? She said, I'm homesick. I said, this is your home. She said, I know, I'm fucking sick of it. <laughs> I said, you cheeky cunt, you go out more times than the gas. <laughs> she was trying a new coat on. I said, your knickers are coming down. She said, they're not. I said, well, the fucking coat's going back. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, you wouldn't think I was an ugly baby, would you? <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I was such an ugly baby, the midwife slapped our dad. <laughs> I had that many boils and spots and warts. I woke up in my pram one day and a fucking blind man was reading me face. <laughs> I used to think I was the right fucking teddy boy, did you? The days of rock and roll, it's all cock and dole now, isn't it? I was outside the school one day and a copper said, All right, fat, you loitering on your way. I said, Fuck, yeah. Gadgy told me to mind that dog shit and he hasn't come back yet. <laughs> Teacher said, have you fallen out with me, son? You've been bringing me in a big bag of raisins for a full year and you've stopped. I said, oh, me rabbit's dead, miss. 